Hello and welcome to another video in the differentiation series from Ragged Maths. In this video we're going to be introducing and doing a lot of examples using the chain rule. What the chain rule is used for is differentiating composite functions, so when you have one function inside another. Now there are lots of general rules and tricks that you can more often than not use in questions in the exam, but the formal chain rule is this. That if we have dy by dx, that is the same as dy by du times du by dx. Now what are the y's and u's in all of this? Well, what we're saying is very similar to this, where y is some function of u and u is some function of x. Okay? So by using kind of this relationship, you can differentiate a lot of things. We've already seen a little bit the chain rule in action, where we're differentiating things like cos of 2x, because we have one function, 2x, inside another function, cos. So let's use that as an example to show you kind of how things work. on a very basic level. So we have y as a function of x currently. So for the chain rule to work, what we need to change is make this y as a function of u. So u is going to be 2x. So therefore, y is the same as cos u. So using our formula, we need dy by du. Given what we've got here, how are we going to get that? Well, differentiating y as a function of u. So cos u differentiates to minus sine u we need du by dx. Well, how are we going to get that? Well, differentiating this u function here. 2x differentiates to 2. So we know that dy by dx is dy by du times du by dx. So we get 2 times or minus, minus sine u times 2. But notice how this doesn't have any u's in it. We need to remove the u here. And how do we do that? Well, we have our original u function here. So before we looked at how we can jump straight from here to here. And you can do that. And in fact, with a lot of examples, or with the majority of chain rule problems, you can do that. But if you consistently get it wrong, I would strongly advise using this method to practice until you can spot the patterns. Also, this method is very, very similar to something you're going, I'm going to do in another video called integration by substitution. That works in a very similar way to this. Obviously, this is differentiation. This topic is generally considered by a lot of students to be one of the hardest things on the A-level. So if you can get the hang of the way this works, 
this works in a very, very similar manner. So we'll look at a few more examples. I'll pop them up and then you can have a go and then I'll go through each of them in this way. So here are the examples. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, have a go at them. What I'll do is I'll pop up the answer first and then go through the explanation for each of them in turn. Here are the solutions. What I'm going to go through next is the trick to be able to do these quickly and so you can see how to do each of these relatively quickly. Okay, so here we have x cubed plus 1 squared, the first example on our sheet. So obviously you can go through the long process of identifying, okay, well, u is x cubed plus 1, so du by dx is 3x, y equals u squared, so dy by du is 2u, multiplying the two together, we get 2u times 3x, which is 6xu, which is 6x, x cubed plus 1. So, the longer method. However, with all chain rule type questions, you can try and spot a trick. Now, this is a little more abstract, but it can help speed these questions up. The first thing you need to do is identify what is the inside function and what is the outside function. So the inside function is what we would call the u bit. The outside function is the y bit. So, what you can do is you can think, okay, how do I do all of these steps but in my head? So what you're going to do in your head is differentiate the outer function. So we're going to think, okay, if I differentiate the outside function, regardless of what's in here, this is a normal something with a power. So we're going to do multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1. So differentiating the outside function, we multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1, that shouldn't be there, and then everything else just stays the same. So we differentiate the outside function. We then differentiate the inside function. So x cubed plus 1 differentiates to 3x squared. Then all we do is times them together. And that's a lot quicker than this method. When you get onto the more complicated differentiation questions using additional rules, this is what you're going to have to do so that you can keep up the pace of a question. So I'll just talk through a couple of the other ones from that, um, from that list of examples in the same way. So let's look at C, which was y equals 5 over x squared minus 1. Now, in order to get this in a nice form, we need to think about this as 5 times x squared minus 1 to the minus 1. So, our outside function is to the minus 1. Our inside function is x squared minus 1. 
So. Five. Outside function, multiply by the power, reduce the power by one. Times by the derivative of the inside function. And we're there. In a similar way, part D works. The last one I'm going to look at is part G, which is sine squared x. So this is not obvious what the inside and outside functions are. But sine squared x is the same as sine x all squared, which is different to part h sine of x squared. That's why this notation exists. So multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1, times by the derivative of the inside bit. And then as I did in my answers, you can simplify this further to sine 2x if you've done double angle formulae already. Again, like I've been saying, once you've got the derivative, everything else you do is exactly the same, whether it's stationary points, gradients at particular func points, that kind of thing. It's, it's all the same idea. It's just how you get to the dy by dx that changes. Thank you for watching.